guys need to have a dream or be. Um, I want to remind you about the Valley Cash drawing, which is going on. Uh, and if you don't know what Valley Cash is, Valley Cash is, uh, it brings together 17 businesses so far. And the way it works is this. You can buy Valley Cash at the Chamber office, <laughs> at Key Bank, and at Teton Springs. And if you'd like to volunteer to be another location to buy Valley Cash from, that would greatly help it. A customer comes in, they pay $10, and they get $11 in Valley Cash. So if they buy $50, they get $55 in Valley Cash to spend at any non, at anyone or at all of 17 merchants who are in the program. Now, we're also planning to sign up more merchants, so as we expand the number of merchants, then that would be great too. So the drawing tonight, um, if you, you should have been given a slip of paper to fill out with your name, and we ask you to write one thing about the chamber, whether good or bad, we're just looking for feedback in general, because like we said, we want this to be a collaboration between all our members um, and ourselves to try to make this into the chamber we want to make it to be. So write down something good or bad, and we're going to choose 10 people, we're going to draw this throughout the night, We'll choose 10 people, and each of those people will win $10 in Valley Cash that you can use at any one of those local businesses. Okay, so since last year, um, we embarked on a couple initiatives. One was to bring more customers to your doorstep, and the other was to build bridges between some of the other economic development nonprofits in the area. Um, as far as building bridges goes, I want to like you to well, please join me in welcoming Grant Targi back as a member to the chamber. As a uh, Cassie Abel is our new board member with us, and she's a representative from Grant Targi tonight. Um, you know, we really want to thank them for their leadership because we know that if if we all come together, and particularly if some of the larger businesses come together and play a leadership role, um, we can make this into a chamber that, that is much stronger and we can really promote the self-interest of, of all of us. We also partnered with the Teton Valley Foundation to form the Teton Valley Marketing Alliance. Um, as you know, Teton Valley Foundation sponsors uh, a number of concerts throughout the year in the summertime. They've also brought widespread panic up to uh, Grand Targhee on July 4th. And they also sponsored the Snow Fest uh, this year. And Bingo. And Bingo. <laughs> and the Art Walk. And the Art Walk. <laughs> a lot of great stuff to like. <laughs> but we're working together with them this year um, to, and to manage the grant that we got from the Idaho Travel Council. So we're bringing together the best minds in marketing in, in the Valley in order to manage this grant. Uh, we received a record grant award this year. It was $69,000, $69,740. And that was a record award for us. And that was granted to us by the Idaho Travel Council. Uh, we also joined efforts with the Teton Valley Business Development Council. Uh, we're meeting monthly with them. Our boards meet jointly together uh, once per month. Um, and Bob Foster, or I think someone is here to kind of update you on, on things going on later on today. And lastly, a couple of our board members, including, including myself, were part of Teton Valley 2020, uh, which helped shape the planning process and also has an economic development component within that. So that was kind of the different bridges we built with area nonprofits in order that were also looking at economic development issues. As far as bringing more business to your doorstep, um, we held seven ribbon cuttings this year. We'd like to do more uh, this year. Uh, we held one at Anytime Fitness, uh, one for Laser Inc., one for Key Bank, Big Hole Music, and Teton Valley Healthcare Images Suites, and I think Rad Recycling just recently. Um, ribbon cuttings are a great way to introduce a new business to the Valley or to introduce what's new about your business to the Valley. So I urge you to take advantage of them. Um, talk to Erica Rice. She's right 
there. Are you the ribbon cutting the leaf? <laughs> Our kids have done a great job in you know, building this program and helping businesses find ways to announce new things about their businesses uh, to the Valley. Uh, Erica also was the, the, the uh, her brainchild was widespread savings. Uh, this was a coupon book that we distrib distributed uh, on July 4th weekend. 59 businesses participated. And the way it worked is if a business participated, they would get listed on the back here with a map along with their special offer on the inside. <clears throat> so this was available during July 4th weekend when the lodging was essentially sold out with a lot of new people in the area. Um, there was a map on here in order to help them find businesses and I know a lot of people in the chamber had been asking for some kind of map of businesses so this was uh, one way we delivered on that. There was also a drawing tied to this so all the 59 businesses also had uh, buckets where they could, de where uh, customers could deposit uh, their name, and they would be entered into a drawing. Uh, and there were a lot of great prizes. I think the top prize was a golf and stay at Teton Reserve Club. So there was some significant prizes. Um, we had a lot of good participation in that. We ran the Adventurize Ad Campaign in Salt Lake City and Boise. And this was an ad campaign that was both print and online. Uh, it ran for 12 weeks in Boise and Salt Lake, which are the two closest areas to us and some of our prime markets for, for drawing customers here uh, for vacations. Uh, those ads reached 135,000 readers. We also partnered with KFAN, uh, which is an AM station in Salt Lake. They are the official radio station of the Utah Jazz. Uh, they reach 150,000 listeners each week. And they produced a live remote um, on the 4th of July weekend from Teton Valley, just telling people in Salt Lake you know, all the great things that were going on here on the 4th of July. They also produced for us a video uh, and that was hosted by Emmy Award winner Steve Brown. Uh, and this video is also on our site, and we encourage you guys to, to share that. Where do we see it? On the website? Yeah. Uh, it's on our website. Uh, at the top of the website, there is a rotating, there's a section that rotates different slides. One of the slides says, watch this great video. <laughs> Okay, so the election results are in uh, for, the, for the board, uh, so I want to thank you all for participating in that. We've got some board members who weren't on the ballot this year, and some new board members that are coming this year. First of all, I'd like to extend a warm and very warm thank you to both Reed Rogers and Lou Christensen, who are... provided decades of selfless labor in <laughs> keeping the chamber alive and making it thrive and bringing it to the point where this new board can take over and build it into something um, that continues on from there. Uh, we've also got some new faces in the chamber. We have uh, Virginia Simons who's sitting in the back there. Virginia is our new uh, project coordinator. Um, Virginia is new to the Valley, but she's been in Jackson for, I think, 10 plus years and is very familiar with, with the type of events that go on here, what people are interested in. She runs her own event organizing business, and she's already started to make some great contributions to the Chamber, um, both in terms of the way the website is looking, the way the newsletter is looking, and she was the brain, uh, Valley Cash was her brainchild. Um, and finally, uh, we've got two new board members who I think are going to come up here and tell us a little bit about themselves. Uh, we have Cassie Abel from Grand Targhee and Sarah Bieber from US Bank. So I'll just ask them to come on up and introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Cassie Abel. 
usual, I am fairly new to the Valley. Currently, marketing manager at Grand Targhee, and um, I mean, <laughs> I'm giving you my life story, but I don't think anyone really wants to hear that. So, um, yeah, I look forward to meeting everyone and seeing everyone around the Valley and learning about your businesses and what's important to you. So, I'm Sarah Bieber and I work at U.S. Bank down in Victor as one of their bankers and I've been in the Valley for four years and love this place and I'm very excited about this new opportunity to meet a lot of the businesses and get to meet up with more people in Victor since I'm usually, or Drake since I usually <laughs> tap in, in Victor so I'm really excited about that. So we've got a lot of <clears throat> a lot of new momentum going forward. We've got some new stuff. We've got a lot of new programs, some of which which already have taken off. We've got some great new board members. Uh, we have some <clears throat> great leadership from one new, new member in particular, Grant Targhee. And we're working with all the other nonprofits in the area to, to really make this a stronger organization. So with that, uh, I'd like to turn it over to Erica, who is going to uh, lead us into the next part of the program. And we're also going to draw some value. So, Kevin, you're not off the Okay. Any last entries out there? All right, we're going to draw. How many are you? Three? Go, Kevin. First one is Margie Singleton.
important to me to uh, have these ribbon cuttings and have these grand reopenings so that you guys can get some more people into your business and get people excited about what you're doing in your business. If you're rebranding yourself or you have a new service to offer or you have something different that you're going to be doing, uh, let us help you promote that and let us help you tell the rest of the community about that and put some big fanfare on. Um, the next thing that I'm pretty excited about is our 2012 networking series. We started this in December at Silver Star when they had their new store opening in Driggs. And we're going to continue this doing quarterly networking events at your businesses. So if you would like to host a networking event in 2012, please let us know. Um, this isn't any cost to you. Uh, we just do the promotion. We get everything organized for you. And we bring people into your businesses, into your office, into your store um, to talk about what you have going on in your business or to meet other members so that you can find out um, ways, different ways to figure out problems or get advice from other members or find out what's going on in the community. The next thing is our online networking group that we are gaining a little bit more ground with. Um, this is a Google group that you can subscribe to and then you're able to network with other members online. So you can post announcements about your business, um, you can ask people for advice, you can post a question, maybe you're looking for a vendor like a graphic designer or a printer, and maybe somebody will have a recommendation for you. So it's a way for you guys to communicate with each other, and just another way to find out what other members have to offer each other. Also, you've noticed um, if you're a Twitterer -er or if you're a Facebooker, you'll notice that um, we've been pretty heavy on the social media in the last few months, and we hope that helps you um, find out more about what's going on with the Chamber and to help us get out more into the community. Um, we've been, I, I do the Twitter feed for the Chamber, and Virginia's been really great with the Facebook feed, trying to post some pictures and some announcements about the business. Um, so please, if you are not a follower of either our Twitter feed or our Facebook page, please do that. We a lot of announcements and a lot of information about the chamber on those pages. Um, also, we are in the process of figuring out what to do about the balloon rally this year. We have a board meeting tomorrow, um, and that will be a hot topic of conversation. And um, figuring out how we should structure the event and how it's going to make the most impact on the community. If you have feedback on that, please let us know. I'm going to hand it over to Scott Anderson. He's going to tell you a few things about our website, give you some metric, metrics and statistics for those kind of numbery people out there. Um, and then I'm going to pass it over to Virginia, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about Valley Cash. I was told I didn't have to do anything tonight, so I'm a little bit off guard. No. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about the website and kind of what we've been doing to it and what it, what it means to, uh, to you as members. Um, and when I, when I say what we've been doing, I have to say mostly Virginia, actually. Uh, when she started about four or five months ago, uh, she's really been focusing not just on the social media, but also the website of helping uh, uh, you know, keep it going and updated. Uh, for example, I mean, we're, we're, up, we're updating at least once a week, uh, sometimes more than that, you know, kind of help our SEO so people have a reason to go back to the website, to keep uh, going back and looking at it. And um, as well, you know, social media, we've been, we've been able to drive a lot of traffic, traffic that way. Uh, but I want to look at the numbers of the last, for example, the last two months, so the first of this year versus the last two months of last year, and some of the, the improvements we've been able to see by, by visitor intake because of the changes that were made and the work, what we're doing. Uh, for example, for visitors, uh, this year we're already at 51% of visitors and visitor traffic, which is pretty big. Yeah, it's, it's awesome to hear. I like that, a little bit of excitement. <laughs> I planted someone in the, in the crowd. <laughs> so thank you. Um, and my wife was supposed to be here to help me out, too. Show up. Her enthusiasm is shown. <laughs> thank you. Um, as well, a few of the other things, I, uh, page views are up, so uh, people are you know, spending a little bit more, more time on the site and looking at it. But the thing that's really big that I like is, is unique visitors. Uh, the way it's up, you know, people can come back multiple times, but you really want the unique visitors because uh, that's new face and new eyeballs that are seeing the chamber and seeing businesses here. And that's up, uh, I mean, from last year, about 54% uh, unique visitors. Wow, I saw that and I was like, that's pretty sweet. You know, new people come to the website. We're being easier to find, and what they're mostly looking for, besides, you know, coming to the main page, 
The calendar page is very popular. That's our second most visited um, landing page, as well as activities and lodging. So that tells me people are coming here to do things, to find out what's going on. You know, visitors are going to be coming here, saying, well, what's going on? What's happening in Drake's? What's going to be, what, what can I do while I'm out there? So it's a, it's, it's a powerful website, and we're really pushing forward um, to continue to do this and, and keep evolving. But when you see Virginia, just thank her for what she's been able to, to do, and she's just been able to spend that time to help uh, move it forward. But I, yeah, just some things I wanted to, to share with you. Thanks. <clears throat>
every month and we have a different topic. And so that's a good way to find out what's going on with the chamber and what services we can offer you guys. Also, we have a lot of new board members and staff that are out in the community making phone calls. Some of you may have gotten a phone call inviting you here to this meeting tonight. Um, and a lot of people have said that was really great and we're excited for the reminder. And also being in your business and finding out what's going on behind the counter and how your business is going. Um, so if you do see us out and about in the community, don't be afraid to also give us some feedback on what's going on and what's happening in your business. And if we can come by and visit and see what's going on. Also, um, we, last year we did a community survey where we invited everybody in the community to give their opinion on the chamber. Um, what we were doing, what they would like to see us doing, what some of their opinions were, and we got some really great feedback. So please look for that in the next couple of months. We're going to continue to do that, make some tweaks to it, um, but we also want to continue to get some feedback so that we're offering the right services and we're doing the right things for our members. So we're going to do some more Valley Cash now, and then I'm going to hand it over to Jeff, and he's going to talk a little bit about collaboration. Craig, do you want to do the valley cash? Big D. <laughs> Becky Strout. Yeah. Becky was actually very instrumental in getting Valley Cash off the ground. She donated a lot of the printing and the graphic design and um, was working with Virginia. So extra shout out for Becky. Yes. And Deb Hinkley. Territory and then the Teton Valley Chamber of Commerce. 
and I think Kevin spoke earlier that this year was our largest uh, grant award of almost seventy thousand dollars, and that's the goal of the Teton Valley Marketing Alliance is to really strategically spend that money. And Shannon will talk a little bit about that. But YTT is basically based out of the Rexford Chamber of Commerce, um, and this year they funded four, um, and, and their goal is to promote all of Region Six. So we actually benefit from any marketing that they do uh, in the region through their website. Um, but you'll see these maps that Teton Valley News printed. Uh, it's a Yellowstone Teton Territory area map, as well as a local Teton Valley map. And uh, working down in a hotel, our concierge staff uses these all the time. They're a great map. Scott has these. Um, and again, YTT paid for this, so it didn't cost the chamber, and it didn't cost any of the local businesses to have these printed. Um, the Adventure Dog, which was a collaboration of Region 6 again, was printed by our friends at Powder Mountain Press, um, and again, paid for by this region. So it's, uh, it's been a great help to the businesses here in Teton Valley to have that money coming through. Um, there, they, the YTT also uh, is a membership-based group, and so businesses in Teton Valley can join YTT they're doing a promotion right now. If you've never been a member before, uh, the normal annual fee is $50, and right now you can join for $35 um, and get basically promoted through their website. Um, all the trade shows that uh, they attend, uh, NTA, RMI, uh, Go West, and some other uh, big shows around the country. Uh, so we talked about the map, um, and then really, um, I'll talk, after Shannon talks a little about the TVMA, um, I'll talk about Bob unfortunately lives out in the, in the west end of the valley and is stuck, he's going to try and make it out, but couldn't do so. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the Chamber of Lines. But Shannon, do you want to come up and just talk a little about the TVMA and what's going on there? Hello. Uh, for those of you that don't uh, know me, my name is Shannon Brooks Hamby, and uh, in addition to working with the Marketing Alliance in the interest of um, pre-clarifying any confusion, I'm also the Executive Director of the Community Foundation of Teton Valley, which big picture has some synergies with what's going on here, but on the ground is not involved, so just to clarify that. Um, as Jeff mentioned, the uh, Teton Valley Marketing Alliance was created in uh, the fall of 2011 as a collaboration between the Chamber and the Teton Valley Foundation. And the current alliance is made up of members of both boards. So in addition to myself and Jeff, it's Cassie Abel from Grand Targhee, Jordi Gillette, Dave Hudasco, um, who has a pretty extensive background in event planning, and Dottie Wilson as the grant manager, so she really handles all of the paperwork required by the grant to be reimbursed by the state. Um, and that's, I guess, important to understand as well. We don't get a big um, cash pot of $70,000 with the grant award. It's actually a process of reimbursements from the state based on the requirements that um, they have for spending that money. And the biggest requirement that they have is that that money has to be spent to generate overnight stays in Teton Valley because the money is collected through the lodging tax, so that makes sense. Um, when we uh, first got together and started talking, strategy is definitely one of the things uh, we're focused on, as well as decisions by committee. So we meet once a month uh, to address different programs and initiatives that we're starting to launch. We're at a point where I don't have a slideshow to show you, but I can tell you about some of the things that we're doing. Um, the, one of the big focuses for us right now is um, uh, addressing the guest experience, particularly online. And a big focus for us will be uh, an expansion of the web presence that exists for visitors. Uh, it'll be a collaborative effort. It will align with the current Teton Valley Chamber of Commerce website, which has excellent uh, search engine optimization results. And as we go out and start talking to people about the valley through advertising, through social media, it will drive everyone to one central point 
that has the information that visitors specifically are looking for when they're planning a trip here. So our goal to get that website designed is uh, about four weeks from now, and it'll be pretty simple to start off, um, but it will focus on dining, lodging, and activities. Um, the priority for us in terms of messaging for the Valley is really going to focus on the recreational opportunities here initially. Uh, it's something that we're already in the mix and known for. It's something we feel like we can put money toward and capitalize on return visits pretty quickly and um, is also a great way to position us on a, a national level because we do offer a world-class experience here. There's been a lot of talk um, on the Chamber side and in the Valley about branding Teton Valley, and that can mean a lot of different things, but uh, at this point, we don't have any intention of, of bringing in a, a big branding agency and doing that sort of broad exercise. We feel like there is some evolving that needs to happen, and there are some areas where we can make a significant impact right away without focusing on, on that. That said, we do need a, a campaign and a, and a message that represents the valley and is still broad enough to evolve. So uh, the tagline we're working with right now is Teton Valley where real is unreal. And that tagline grew out of the idea that um, a lot of the western towns and the resort towns are homogenized on a certain level. Um, they look the same, they almost have a theme park feel with their architecture and design. And this is still a very real um, local mountain town experience in Teton Valley. But at the same time, we offer some pretty unreal experiences here. Um, so it applies when it comes to recreation, it applies when it uh, comes to the local food movement here, which will be another area of focus for us moving forward, uh, as well as you know as we start to broaden the messages for the valley. So that's where we're starting, that's where a lot of the creative will tie to. And uh, we will, um, so in addition to web, we've got a big focus on supporting some of the events, both new and existing, in the Valley. Um, we've, f moving forward, we're trying to figure out a way to um, both choose events that we feel could use the help, as well as invite events to come and apply for funding from us. And we'll release more details on that as we get into the next grant cycle, but uh, for now we've uh, supported the Great Snow Fest. Um, we're looking at working with the Idaho Rendezvous. Um, the, there's a new plein air, outdoor painting, uh, an arts festival that's being planned for the summer. Um, and uh, we're working with Slow Foods for a harvest festival for the fall. We want to make sure strategically we're covering both the seasons that are traditionally busy here, as well as seasons that where there's opportunities, such as the fall. Um, in terms of advertising, the, the website, the completion of the website is really key there because we feel like, uh, in terms of bang for the buck and in terms of measuring results of ads, our focus needs to be with online advertising. And so the campaigns that will launch will be regional in some of the areas that have already been. Uh, discussed tonight, as well as exploring um, sort of broader publications that, uh, for example, Sunset Magazine, where you could do a geo-targeted campaign, which means that we would leverage their national exposure, but uh, actually cherry-pick some of the areas where those, those ads would reach. So uh, that's coming down the pike as well. Uh, we've got a pretty robust public relations budget, and um, we're working with uh, the same agency that I worked with up at Targhee, who I felt did some pretty incredible things in terms of placements for um, the, the Valley and Targhee, and who also understand that the broader message of the Valley um, raises the tide for everybody. So uh, we'll expand on that with <coughs> stories that focus on winter and summer trails, um, as well as incorporate the local dining, shopping, and uh, local food stories that are here in the Valley. We're working on a press trip that will happen at the end of March, and we'll also, uh, that'll be a winter focus, and we'll also move forward with a summer press trip this year as well. Did I miss anything? Okay. 
Right. And so, right. Actually, that's a good one. So the um, the other thing that we're aware of is is that we can put these tools in place, but the the experience still has to be easy for the guest in the online environment. And one of the big pieces of that puzzle that we're missing in the valley is a central reservation system. Um, we're looking at a booking engine that's actually presented at the state level several times. It's called Jackrabbit. It's used by Parks, Park City, Visit Park City, and a couple other <coughs> towns that have similarities to this area, and can be a very um, real and easy and somewhat affordable solution for us as that naturally evolves here. So it's not a long-term solution, but it can certainly be a short-term one and really help us translate what we're doing to get people to the website to that actual booking their overnight stay. Um, moving forward, so the, the grant cycle actually starts again uh, now. The first deadline for our grant submittal is in April. And the way that we're going to go about that is write a marketing plan for the Valley. Um, the marketing plan will then be translated into the actual language in the grant, which is typically broader so it leaves you a little wiggle room to adjust your plans midstream. And in addition to the things I mentioned in building on those, we think there's opportunity with the new uh, San Francisco flight into Idaho Falls for a, a big collaborative effort with Teton Valley as well as Idaho Falls and Rexburg. Um, there's a consumer trade show in San Francisco. There are press opportunities there. And uh, that'll probably drive some of our ad buy as well. Um, Jackson Hole. What to do about Jackson Hole and casting the net over there and capturing those people? Uh, it's a, a question that we talked about it at Targhee. Uh, we talked about it when I worked in Jackson in the mid-90s. Um, and two of the initiatives that we're going to explore for the coming grant cycle will be an in-Jackson presence, which gets into tricky scenarios for us because it's not necessarily, it may translate into day visits, which would be great with the Valley, uh, for the Valley, but it doesn't follow those strict guidelines of overnight stays that, that are required by the grant spend. So exploring ways to do that, as well as reach them where they're booking their Jackson vacation. And with a little bit of research um, and some help from some uh, consultants, <coughs> as well as collaboration with Targhee, uh, that should be pretty easy to do. But that, we think that's the key in terms of capturing that three million in the summer. Jackson Hole Market is really getting out ahead of them as they're considering booking that vacation and being in those spots online. Uh, I think that's it for me, and I think we'll have a Q&A if anyone has questions, but thanks for your time. So I was hoping to, uh, that was all speech I was going to have to do tonight. Um, but uh, Bob Foster wasn't able to make it. Um, but one of the things we've done, and, and I think uh, Kevin hit on earlier, is the, the Teton Valley, Valley Business Development Group is also joining our monthly meetings in the Teton Valley Chamber. And it's been very, very successful. Um, the information that's coming out of there, uh, the discussions, and really looking forward in, in growing the valley um, is excellent. We're looking to potentially join forces and move into a new spot. Um, we're currently over in the uh, building behind Teton Valley Realty. Um, and Silver Star, have, they've done some exploratory work in the building. And they're looking to donate wireless, um, some video conferencing, and really making it a very usable space that if a visitor came in or somebody that was interested in relocating to the valley, or even starting a business here, they can come in and get all those questions answered right there in one building. Um, so that's uh, it's really exciting um, to keep moving forward. And then lastly, um, I was over at uh, the legislative the Idaho Chamber Alliance Legislature days over in Boise a few weeks ago, and uh, it was interesting because they had a big luncheon with the governor there. And, each of the areas stood up with their representation, and they said, and then Teton Valley, and the other areas had 18, 20, 30, 40 people, and uh, Teton Valley had one person, so. <laughs> Way Thanks, to go. Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, it, was, it was very interesting, because I think uh, all my focus, 
since I've been here for 19 years has really been more local um, politics, you know, in, in the Valley. And um, Teton Valley is starting to, to be recognized over at the state level um, through the Idaho Travel Council, the Tourism Office. Um, so it's, it's actually pretty exciting for the Valley um, to see this to see this start to happen. Um, but I guess I would encourage, um, and I think we're moving on kind of Speak. But after this, if you have questions, come talk to me. Um, we can give you information. We're going to start pushing more information through our website. But uh, to become involved um, at the state level, I think, is really critical. There's a couple big initiatives right now. Um, one is taxes, to try and lower taxes. Uh, Idaho obviously has a huge uh, discrepancy between uh, the surrounding states. Utah, it's, it's much cheaper um, to, to operate a business down in Utah. So they're really looking at that to try and drive businesses in the area. And uh, if, if we agree or disagree with some of their initiatives, we really, as a valley, need to, to tell them you know, uh, what we believe and, and uh, where we'd like to see it go. So there's um, a movement on the taxes, uh, on a state-funded, um, um, they call it a, a health care, uh, I'm drawing a blank on it now. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't think of the name of it. But, so there's a few things. Uh, that are, that are happening at the state, and, and I think we just really need, if we if we believe in growing the valley and, and having a voice over there, we need to be involved. Um, and then finally, I think, uh, I think that's all I have. But I did want to mention uh, one other individual that has been very instrumental in keeping that chamber uh, office going, and that was Jean Yoshi. I don't know if you all remember Jean Reed's wife. Uh, she uh, was another one that gave countless hours mm -hmm. to keep that chamber office going and setting up meetings like this. And I mean, it's great to see this turnout. And uh, Erica and Virginia are incredible and done an amazing job um, to put this all together. And then I think we're going to do a raffle. And uh, we'll be done just before 7. But any questions for any specific individuals um, with regards to what's going on? We'll do a little Q&A. Do you want to do the, the drawing? Yes. Now? <laughs> Any questions while we're doing the drawing? I have a question, Jeff. Yes, Izzy. Um, there's been some, some conversations and some presentations and some communications about the development of some aspect of a higher education presence here in Teton Valley, whether it's a vocational or a College of the Tetons. Um, is there, um, of, of our groups and our chamber, um, has there been participation in, in that? Because uh, you know, I really see that as a very sustainable thing for this There's valley. an individual in here that wears a whole bunch of hats. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to ask her to <coughs> put on that hat real quick. And Elsie, congratulations. Oh, oh, <laughs> Shannon, would you mind sure. just touching on that? Um, Isabel, I can only speak to College of the Tetons. That's, um, I've become more familiar with them and that um, proposal in my role at the Community Foundation. And uh, it's basically being led by several individuals, um, both from the Jackson and Teton Valley side. Uh, it, it hasn't, I, as far as I know, had uh, involvement with the Chamber of uh, Kathy Rinaldi just joined as one of their uh, board members. Um, Jack Shea, who is affiliated with the Teton Dream Science School. School and the Dream School over in Jackson, is one of the key people behind that initiative. And uh, they're uh, in the process of applying for their 501c3 status as a nonprofit. They're looking at a location in Victor. Um, and they uh, will likely do fundraising on both sides of the pass. The model is a small liberal arts school, uh, Prescott College down in Arizona, College of the Atlantic in Maine are two of the organizations that they use as sort of like-minded um, entities. And uh, they're really in a, the very beginning exploratory stages of the idea that it, it sounds like they've got some good momentum going behind what they're doing. Thank you. There's Thank also you. talk about yes. the, the vote. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Isabel. Who drew your name? 
Alpine Lines of Bistro and Driggs, Barker Ewing River Trips in Jackson, Cocoa Grove in Driggs, Dry Ridge Steamway, Driggs, Festive Living in Victor, He's a Canyon Photography, who has come from here Also, Elsie from Dry Ridge is here. Um, keep printing, Becky over there in the back. Uh, Peak in Sports, Silver Star, Subway of Victor, you can talk to Craig. Here. Sunshine Refrigeration and Appliance, Teton Mountain View Lodge, he's digging out his car, oh, was. Uh, Teton Springs, Jeff, Teton Valley News, Wardrobe Company, Indrix, Tony's Pizza and Pasta, and Valley Lumber. And if your business isn't on there, you don't you want it on this poster? <laughs> And lastly, we want to welcome all of our new members this year. Um, we're up to almost 200. So uh, about a year and a half ago, we were uh, seeing uh, a lot of attrition. So it's, it's very exciting to see new members. But we'll recognize um, all the new members. Alpine Wines, Anytime Fitness, Barker Ewing Scenic Float Trips, Barker Ewing Whitewater, Big Hole Music, Blue Fly Gallery, Coco Grove, Crystal Clean Cleaning Service, Global Wealth Management, Gucci Birds, High Range Designs, Kisa Coney Photography, Laser Link, Local Yokels Art Emporium, Carrie was just here a minute ago, Laconda Di Fiori, Lone Elk Lodge, Peak Printing, Pendles Bakery, Prime Properties, Rad Recycling, David Dasco, uh, Roth Enterprises, Slow Food in the Tetons, uh, Subway and Victor, Sunshine Refrigeration and Appliance Repair, Table Rock Automotive here in Tony, Target Animal Shelter, Teton Base Camp, Teton County Fair Board, Teton Reserve, Blue Bruce Kid Grill, Teton Science Schools, Teton Valley Talks.com, The Arena at Teton Valley South by Vistas, Tripod Productions, With the Green, and Yost Mark. So that's a great, great group of businesses to have.